Hey Defenders, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion Solutions. I started Security Onion in 2008 to provide a free and open source platform for intrusion detection, network security monitoring, and threat hunting to help you peel back the layers of your network and make your adversaries cry. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at getting started with Security Onion. You may have heard of Security Onion, but maybe you've never actually tried it. So what's the easiest way to try Security Onion? We have a great tool called SO Import PCAP, which allows you to take a PCAP file and import it into Security Onion very quickly and easily. So you could do this using your own PCAP file, or you could do this using some of the sample PCAP files that we have built right into our Security Onion ISO image. So if you wanted to duplicate this today, you could go and download our Security Onion ISO image from securityonion.net. You could install it in a virtual machine. You only, need, you only need four gigabytes of RAM to do that. Once you've got it installed, you don't even need to run through our traditional setup wizard. You can simply run this command, so import pcap, and then pass it the full path to the PCAP that you want to import. In this case, we're importing a PCAP file from our opt samples directory. And uh, specifically, this sample comes from malwaretrafficanalysis.net. So shout out to Brad Duncan, who maintains a great archive of very interesting PCAPs and has graciously allowed us to include some of those PCAPs in our Security Onion ISO image. So thanks again, Brad. You can see here that after I ran that command, so import pcap, it configured the entire system for me. And then once the system was configured, it then imported that pcap. And so it analyzed the pcap and it generated some IDS alerts and it generated some protocol logs and some interesting things that we can take a look at. So at the very end of so import pcap, we get this URL. We can copy that URL go over to our browser and paste and go. And so that's going to show us all of the alerts and logs that were created as a result of importing that particular PCAP file. In this case, uh, we can see there were a total of 351 logs and those are broken out into the following categories. At the top, we have network-based IDS alerts uh, and then we have logs coming from Bro. Some of these are connection logs, some of these are specific to HTTP transactions, DNS lookups, etc. But I find it very helpful when kind of looking at cases like this to start off with our network-based IDS alerts. So in this case, I'm going to go to one of our dashboards on the left, uh, and this one is the NIDS dashboard. So when I click on that, it's going to keep the same time frame that we were looking at previously, but only show me the network-based IDS alerts that were generated by the traffic in that PCAP file. And if I scroll down here, I can actually see the alert summary, which is going to show me the different kinds of alerts that were seen based on that traffic. So we see things like Windows EXEs being downloaded, we see things like client data upload, data exfil, command and control check-in. And so these are all very, very interesting alerts, especially when I see things that are in the category of current events or Trojan. I definitely focus in on those. And uh, furthermore, when I see things like command and control check-in uh, and when I see things definitely like data exfil, those are going to be very interesting alerts that I definitely want to take a look into. Now this is not going to be a, a full deep dive into every single alert that's in this PCAP, uh, nor are we going to really get into threat hunting uh, via all of the different protocol logs that we have. But again, just a quick introduction to what we can do with Security Onion. So let's take a look at really what's the, the most interesting alert that we have here, and that's for data exfil. 
because at that point we're really talking about a victim machine that's already downloaded a piece of malware. It's already, that malware is already running on that victim and that malware is then doing this command and control check-in and ultimately doing this data exfiltration. So what I'd like to do is really try to take a look at that. So if I wanted to filter this dashboard based on just this one kind of IDS alert, I could click the magnifying, gla magnifying glass there to filter the entire dashboard. And you see that the NIDS alert summary refreshes. It's only showing the data exfil. So now at the bottom of every single one of our dashboards is this log panel which really exposes all of the nitty-gritty details of all of those individual logs. So I could take this first log here, I could click the triangle to expand that particular log, and I could see all of the fields associated with that log. But really what's really interesting to me as kind of an incident responder dealing with this particular incident is Maybe I want to see the full packet capture, uh, especially in the case of data exfiltration. I want to see what kind of files left my network, what kind of information was stolen from that particular victim PC. So in order to do that, we've got this field here, the underscore ID field, which has a hyperlink, which when clicked, will take us over to another web interface that we have called CapMe. CapMe is going to go out to our full packet capture store. It's going to retrieve that entire TCP stream, and it's going to render it as an ASCII transcript. So we can see some interesting things happening here, including the victim doing an HTTP post, the web server responding with a 200 OK. We see the victim then downloading a DLL. So we then see that followed up with a 307 temporary redirect. So they're now being redirected to this new location. The web server responds and gives it that DLL that they requested. And this goes on for a while. So this is a very interesting TCP stream. If I scroll all the way down, I never do actually see the data exfiltration that my IDS alert was referring to. But what I do see is the fact that CapMe says, we're only showing you the first 500,000 bytes of this transcript output by default. This is a much larger TCP stream. So if we wanted to see that entire TCP stream, we could download the PCAP. And we do that by simply clicking this hyperlink here. And now I've got that PCAP downloaded into my downloads folder. And I could open that up in Wireshark or even better, I could use another tool called Network Miner. So if I open up Network Miner and simply drag and drop that PCAP across, Network Miner is then going to analyze that PCAP. And if we then look at the Files tab, we'll see some evidence uh, very similar to what we had seen in the TCP stream in CapMe, and that's the fact that it's downloading uh, this DLL file, it's downloading some interesting stuff there, but more importantly, we see a zip file here. And this is what was actually exfiltrated. That's what triggered that IDS alert for data exfil that seemed to be very interesting. So now if I right click on that and go to open folder, I now can see that zip file that was uh, exfiltrated from my network. So now if I right click and extract here, that now creates a folder that I can drill into. And so there's interesting things inside of this zip file uh, that was exfiltrated from my network. So I could go into the autofill folder, I could take a look at Google Chrome default.txt, and there you see this is some autofill information from the Google Chrome web browser of this victim PC. So think about those victim machines on your network. If, if they were infected with this particular piece of malware, that autofill information in their browsers may be walking right out the door, right? That may be sensitive information. That might be information that uh, you don't want leaving your network. So that's definitely something that is nice to be able to see what's happening 
behind the scenes when that attack takes place. Now, if we were to go back, the next thing we might take a look at is information.txt. And so here we see this is another file that was included in that zip file that was exfiltrated from my network. And this is just very broad overview type information about this particular victim PC. So we see things like uh, the path that this particular executable is running from. We see the exact version of the operating system, computer name, username, display resolution, the hardware that's running inside the box, processes running on that operating system, and the software that's installed in the Windows OS. So again, very interesting information that is now walking right out the door. And then finally, we see screenshot.jpg. So what I could do here is I could open with our Chromium web browser. And there we see this screenshot of the victim PC. And here we can see, of course, this victim PC was actually set up by Brad Duncan, who created this PCAP file. Uh, and so there's nothing really that interesting here. Uh, but you could imagine if this was a real victim on your network uh, and if the attacker was able to create a screenshot of whatever they were doing and then exfiltrate that information out your network, that's definitely something that's interesting to be able to see from an incident response perspective. And you could think about the even more things that the attacker could do at this point in time uh, if this victim PC was infected with this malware. They could uh, do additional things to this victim. They could then start doing lateral movement throughout your enterprise, pillage the village, find even more information, uh, perhaps on other victim uh, workstations on your network, or even worse, um, connect into your Active, Di Active Directory domain infrastructure, maybe your database infrastructure, finding other even more sensitive information uh, that might then be exfiltrated in very similar manners. So you immediately see the power of having the ability to seamlessly go from network-based IDS alerts to full packet capture and then be able to extract files out of that full packet capture and really be able to reconstruct the scene of the crime. So a couple of things uh, to make you aware of in conclusion, if you uh, are interested in Security Onion and you'd like to download it and follow along with uh, what we did in this video, you can go to securityonion.net, click the download link, you can download that ISO image uh, and fire it up just as I said running SO import PCAP and pass it the full path of the PCAP file as we showed at the very beginning of this video and you could have this up and running very quickly, very easily in a virtual machine. If you are interested in things like training, professional services, and hardware appliances preloaded with Security Onion, check out our company website at securityonionsolutions.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.